Okay, so welcome. We're going to be going over the factors that affect foreign policy by Juan Ocampo. Over two societal factors. American culture, our general beliefs, how we look at other countries, the way we live, international interests, and changing attitudes at home. So, at home and abroad, America is thought of as a free society, that the average citizen is able to do what they want as long as they're not hurting anyone. So the United States is actually a democratic country in which voting is very much encouraged. While equality is very heatedly debated, the general public thinks that the average American does have a good amount of equality compared to other nations. America is also a champion of freedom at home and abroad. So here we see a picture of a U.S. Marine putting an American flag on the statue of Saddam Hussein during the invasion. Also, everybody has a right to, pursue, to the pursuit of happiness, regardless of your age, gender, whatever. Okay, next, uh, I put this map up uh, to represent how most Americans view, the glo especially the Global South. So when most people think of the Global South, they think of uh, people that are not free, people that live under tyranny and oppression on a constant basis, like in North Korea. Having horrible human, human right records. So here we have in Syria in the 1980s, when they were crushing the uprisings. Uh, poor treatment of women and minorities. Uh, here we have a picture in Afghanistan of a woman being beat. Poverty stricken. Many countries are incredibly poor compared to the United States. So next, we're going to be going over how we live and our expectations. We're perceived to have the highest standard of living on Earth. Maybe not so much right now, but definitely not too long. We're free from government tyranny. We don't have, we don't live in Nazi Germany or in Cuba, where we have the secret police breathing down our necks on a, any given basis. We also have the right to bear arms. We have the right to form a militia. Also, we're free from foreign threats and invasion. So we have two big oceans that surround us and two countries that are of no threat to us. We're also a stable country. We're not like Iraq or anywhere like that, where they're under constant regime change. We also have the freedom of speech, religion, association, assembly, etc. We have the right to protest and say what we want as long as we're not hurting anyone. Prior to the 2008 ec economic crash, we actually had a very stable economy and a low poverty rate, especially comparing us to other nations. We're also a capitalist country. We have the right to make money as much as we want. And just as if we have the right to make money, we have the right to spend it. And comparing us to other nations as well, we're a very consumerist society. Next, we're going to be going over our interests, our national interests. So first, promote democracy abroad. Here we have uh, Marines and Army guys in Haiti and Somalia. Also, to sustain our economy and our way of living. So, for example, the U.S.-Saudi relations, it's oil for security. Also, part of our American interest is keep America safe, have a well-equipped, well-trained military able to respond anywhere, anytime. During the Cold War, uh, to stop the spread of communism, and we had a lot of proxy wars uh, because of that. And finally, to stop the spread of terrorism worldwide, which is a very big issue right now. So next, we're going to be going over the changing attitudes at home. Granted, some of this is generational. So changing demographics with the rapid influx of immigrants uh, comes new opinions, new faces, new attitudes. Next, environmental awareness. Many people see that uh, using oil and driving cars a lot is actually very harmful to the environment. And also, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, public support is waning. Uh, many people think Iraq is a very unpopular war. Next, individual factors. We're going to be going over the President Bush strategy and the Obama strategy. So, the first part of the Bush strategy is preemption. Basically, sh strike the enemy before they strike you. Fight them at, at their home instead of yours. Act alone when necessary. Many times other nations are not going to support what you do, and you have to lead the way and fight them yourself. And also promote democracy overseas, promote freedom overseas. We saw this in Iraq. So next, we're going to be going over the President Obama strategy. 
So the first thing he wanted to do was to restore our status around the world. Uh, the war in Iraq was very unpopular internationally, so he wanted us to restore our image. Confronting terrorism. Here we see the famous picture during the Bin Laden raid. And finally, he wanted to engage with enemies, so countries like Cuba, Iran, uh, Gaza. He wanted us to move forward.